Okay, I see a few more people coming in, but I think we'll go ahead and get started so we don't take up too much more time. Um, hi, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar, More Than Our Stories, and thanks so much for joining us. I'm Sarah Johnson with the Better Care Network, and before we begin the webinar, and I hand over to Kelly, just a few quick um, housekeeping items. During today's webinar, we'll be conducting some rapid polling, which means that there will be about three points throughout the webinar when you should see some multiple choice questions pop up, and you'll be able to select your answer. So we'll give you about a minute or two to answer, and then we'll share the results of the polling. So we just ask that you please participate in those polls when they do come up. Uh, there will also be a time for questions and answers about halfway through the webinar. So we ask that you write down your questions in the chat at any point during the webinar, and we'll keep track of those so that our presenters can answer as many as they can during the question and answer section. And then if there's time at the end, we'll try to take a few more questions as well. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Kelly. Great, thank you. Thanks, Sarah. And next slide, please. And welcome to all of our listeners. My name is Kelly Bunkers, and I am delighted to introduce our two presenters today. Both women are leaders in the care reform movement and have been instrumental in ensuring that the care lever experience, including their own, is brought to the forefront and is used to inform policy and programming. They are passionate advocates with the desire to create better futures for care leavers, as well as children currently living in care. Ruth Washuka is a care reform advocate with a focus on deinstitutionalization, promoting positive mental health, and ending volunteerism. Ruth is a member of the Kenya Society of Care Leavers, KESCA, which you'll hear more about today, where she is currently serving as the secretary. Ruth is trained in journalism and mass communications and uses her skills to advocate for the rights of children inspired by her own upbringing in residential care in Nairobi, Kenya. Ruth is also a One Young World Ambassador, a global community of young leaders across 196 countries, each pursuing the Sustainable Development Goals. And Ruth is joining us from Nairobi, Kenya, and is right next to me. Um, and my Namboze is also another passionate advocate for care leavers in Uganda. My joined Uganda Care Leavers in 2016 as project coordinator. Over the last three years, she has been instrumental and has worked closely with care leavers across Uganda, providing direct support and facilitating communication amongst care leavers across the country. Mai was also instrumental in conducting the research that informed the care leaver experience study that she will present later today. Mai is joining us from Kampala, Uganda. And now, um, slide please. <clears throat> we are going to ask if we can take a quick, rapid online poll to get a sense of who's joining us today. If you can take just a few seconds to tell us a little bit about you. Okay, Sarah, can we see the results, please? Let's see. <laughs> Sarah, can we see the results? There we go. Okay, so a quick summary. We have a significant number of program directors, 40%, but I'm delighted to say we have 14% of our uh, listeners are care leavers themselves. 6% uh, government representatives, the same as social workers or service providers, and a few academics and donors. And the other, um, unfortunately, we can't see what those others are, but 
glad that all of you are participating. Um, for those care leavers, are you a member of a care leaver organization? 11% yes, 89% no. Um, one of the things we hope is that this webinar today will help bring care leavers and uh, different organizations together. So this is really helpful information. Thank you. Okay, Sarah, next slide, please. A very quick summary of sort of what brought us here today and, and why we um, believe it's so important to provide this platform for Ruth and Mai to, to share their stories and to advocate for care leavers in the countries and the organizations they represent, but also across the world. Um, as long as there has been residential care, there have been care leavers. However, it's only in the past several years that care leavers have been recognized as an important voice and have been engaged in different elements of care reform. Much of this engagement has been a direct result of their own advocacy. Quite unfortunate that it did not always come from those of us working in the sector. Care leavers have lived experiences providing examples of why and how caring for children in residential care, as well as those who have left care, should be prioritized. Their stories are often haunting and force us to hear things we don't always want to hear, but the message is clear. We must do better. We must be intentional about engaging care leavers and using their experiences to do better for children. Ruth and Mai are here with us today as individuals who have the lived experience of being in residential care. They are also here as representatives of care leaver organizations that have formed as a means of supporting one another, but also to advocate for change. They are asking those of us involved in care reform, government actors, donors, NGOs, social service providers, academics, and others to do things differently, to make real efforts to engage them, to hear what they are saying, even when it's unpleasant and to allow their voices and lived experiences to inform policy and programs. Ruth and Mai are presenting the experiences of Kaska and the Uganda Care Leavers, but it is our hope that their voices also speak for Care Leavers in every context. As, as Ruth has said to me on many occasions, we don't want any more tokenism. We want real engagement. And I'm happy that today we have the opportunity to hear how this might happen. And now I'm pleased to ask Ruth Washuka to share some information about Kesta. Ruth, next slide, please. Oh, uh, thank you so much, Kelly and, and Beta Care Network for having me here today. Uh, greetings to all of our listeners um, and for the opportunity to educate more on more than our stories. Um, I am here today and I want to share more about uh, Kenya Society of Care Leavers and even more how uh, the, the document was developed. So uh, we, did, um, we did this uh, document uh, through a two days workshop and we brought together a number of care leavers to just get to understand how, um, and a number of things that I'm going to just mention. Number one was to promote the active involvement of care leavers in care reform. You know, uh, right now at a day and age when we are all talking about care reform, but then to just make people understand how do we promote the active involvement of care leavers. Then we also wanted to empower and build self-confidence of the care leavers um, because many uh, of the care leavers. Uh, most, of, most of us here know that we only have a few of us speaking out and doing advocacy work. And this is just because only a small percentage of us are privileged. And so um, most of us who are not able to come out and share our stories, uh, we all have our own struggles. And so how could we bring them together, bring care leavers together to empower them and build their self-confidence so that they are able to be, you know, like uh, strong advocates for the rights of children. And also wanted to create a room for their voices to advocate for positive change, you know. Uh, it's one thing to have a voice and not to have a platform for this. And so we brought this together to make sure that we create a room for the voices of care leavers to just not sit sympathy and I'll talk about it later, but then to bring a uh, positive change in care reform. Um, next slide, please. So uh, we involved 25 Kenyan care leavers in a two-day workshop, like I mentioned, and it was purely led by care leavers. And we gave them an opportunity to compile key messages. Uh, what exactly did they feel and what exactly did they want 
to share out uh, with people like us here today. And this was purely based on the previous experiences. Um, and so we provided concrete suggestions uh, because, yeah, this is what they feel and this is how they would love to suggest on how to, we can involve them and continue to involve them in all aspects of care reform, you know, from design, implementation, monitoring and evaluation and advocacy. And so what was very clear is that sometimes they're involved in, implement, in the implementation of something that they were not involved in the design. But then uh, how could we make sure that they are involved in all aspects, right from design to implementation, monitoring and evaluation, and of course, advocacy. I realized there was mutual desire to share experiences, but then this is not to mean that care leavers want to seek sympathy, but what they, they, they want is to demand action. Uh, as we all know that growing up in care and for every other young, uh, for every other care leaver, we all have very unique experiences. Uh, some are very traumatic, uh, stories of pain, uh, stories of loss, and they all uh, provoke some emotions. But then what the care leavers uh, want us to do, uh, they said when they are sharing their stories, uh, they, they're not doing this to seek sympathy because sympathy without action will not bring about change. And so what they ask for all of us is that they share to make sure that all of us can do, uh, can act on, on, on the same. Um, next slide, please. Yeah, we are using uh, the guidance to inform uh, the work in Kenya, and, and this is uh, to collect and analyze the situation of children and youth in care. We all agree that data is very important. So uh, this guideline sheds light on how to, you know, collect and analyze the situation of children and youth in care, of course, based on the experiences of, of, of the care leavers. Um, and then we also shared the light on how to prepare children before exiting care. Most of us never had the opportunity. And so many of the care leavers uh, have shared at one time or again that they felt they, they, they've not had the control of what is happening into their life. And most uh, times they end up feeling like they're commodities or furniture where they have to be moved from one point to the other without even preparation, you know. And, and this is life. Um, and, and, you know, when life is involved, and we all agree that uh, all of us here want to be informed even before anything happens, you know, in, before any transition that happens in every uh, person when they're growing up. And so uh, care leavers felt that it is very important for us to make it very intentional that we ask of us um, uh, who are practitioners and policy makers to make sure that we prepare children before exiting care. And we've really shared, um, we've shed light on how that preparation looks like. We just want to design guidance on how to support children and youth after care. I, yeah, I know most of us, I think uh, that, yeah, you have exited care and you're an adult and so you might not uh, need any support. But we can all agree that you are your mother's or your father's till when you're 80 or 70. You don't cease to be your families. And so is the case for the care leavers. But when they exit care, it doesn't mean their life stops at that. But then we have designed guidance on how could we continue supporting children and youth after uh, they exit. They need preparation. They need not only to integrate with their, with their families, but also to integrate with the community at large. And so how then can they uh, be able to fit in this community without support? And that is why we feel it has to be very intentional on how we support children and youth um, after exit. And we support key actors uh, engaged in care in how to treat, talk about, and engage with care leavers. And yeah, most of us, uh, and from my uh, experience uh, right now, just a few years that I came to learn that not so many people understand who care leavers are. And even after they get to understand, they don't know how to talk about care leavers. I've come across people say, and this really stands out for me, when they say, or when I think about care leavers, I think about the deaf and the blind and care leavers as people with special needs. Um, how then are we using this guideline to make sure that you're informed on how to talk about a care leaver and not just as a person, with, not as a person with special needs, but then as a person equal as you and that you can look at them um, in a way that is dignifying and not, you know, like to reduce on the stigmatization of care leavers. I sometimes I 
I, you know, at, at a point I mentioned about being a care liver, I can tell that the face changes, you know, like someone starts looking at me differently. So uh, our guideline here is to, to make sure that we inform you on how to treat, talk about care livers and engage with care livers. And of course, now to advocate for informed and intentional role in care reform. Uh, yeah, just at a day and age when we are doing a lot of care reform um, stuff, uh, so, so many of us, and I, I had said this before, like my friends say that a care liver right now is that favorite child. Everyone wants to engage with them. It's more like, yeah, I want to take a selfie with that person because you feel their favorite. So when it comes to the care liver right now, everyone wants to engage and, you know, reach out to care livers to share their stories. And in the midst of this, it is very easy to lose their role in the care reform. And if we do not, you know, inform you on the clear way on how we want to be engaged, then that is lost. And by the end of the day, care livers feel um, it's, it's tokenistic and sometimes they feel exploited. So this guideline here is helping us to, you know, inform every person on uh, the intentional role of a care liver in care reform. Because I know many of us here want to engage care livers and you're wondering uh, what would their role be in this whole subject. So yeah, stay tuned and you're going to learn more about the intentional role of care livers. Great. Thank you, Ruth. And Mai, I know now we are all looking forward to hearing from you about the experience of Uganda Care Leavers. Mai? Thank you, Kelly. Um, hello, everyone listening in. Uh, my name is Mai Namboze from Uganda Care Leavers. Uh, Uganda Care Leavers is a project that supports youth who have spent half or all of their childhood in institutional care. Uh, institution care can be children's home, residential care, children's villages. Um, that depends on how you refer it in your country or in your region. Uganda Care Leavers, have, we have worked, uh, created a network of, of over 300 care leavers from across Uganda. And as part of this network, we did a research uh, on the ex experience of care leavers that created a report we call the care leavers experience. So let me share with you um, a little bit about the care leavers experience. The care leavers experience is a research uh, we conducted between 2016 and 2018 and looked at the experiences of care leavers before entering care facilities their stay at the care facilities and their experience after leaving the care facilities. Uh, first, um, in terms of this research, let me say it was not easy to find care leavers. One reason is the residential care facilities were reluctant to share information and also work with us. We did, however, uh, continue. Uh, with a lot of effort and we came to learn that there is small networks of care leavers that already existed and we are also able to work with them and identify a number of care leavers that we are working with across uh, Uganda that led to the big um, network we have now. Uh, we were able to learn uh, to run eight workshops across Uganda that engaged with over 260 care leavers, 257 uh, questionnaires completed. We also did one-on-one -on -one interviews and small group discussions with care leavers uh, to find out more about their experience. Uh, let me tell you this, uh, running these workshops was eye-opening. The attendance often was overwhelming, and it became clear to us that care leavers were really in desperate need for support. We often, uh, during our workshops, we often uh, provided immediate support. Uh, this was like counseling and medical support. We kept uh, we kept the workshops of environmental friendly. Uh, we 
build teams, playing games. Um, just we made sure that the environment was as friendly as possible so that caregivers can share more of their experience. And all the feedback that was provided by caregivers was anonymous. The caregivers research shows that all caregivers had difficulty in care and even those who were at least thankful that they had somewhere to sleep, to eat, they felt isolated from their families and struggled with, and they are still struggling with life after leaving care. We also discovered that nearly all caregivers had experienced neglect and abuse uh, during the time uh, of their stay in the institution care. Uh, the role of mission trips and volunteers was one of the interesting aspects of the research, and it showed that there were key part of the caregivers, and while in care, energy and emotions were focused on mission trips, volunteers, and donors. Uh, next slide, please. So um, what do we learn from this research? There are lots of interesting and important findings from the workshops and the questionnaire. The research illustrates it's a must. I say this again. The research illustrates it's a must we change the way we care. And as a priority, we ensure that children are prevented from entering care facilities in the first place. Caregivers uh, told us that their main challenges are around continuing education, finding jobs, keeping up with day to day life living costs. They still expect uh, donors to support them as adults. And this is because this is the only way they know in care. Like they've been given, uh, I think caregivers can relate to this. Uh, we, we need to focus on building caregivers' capacity to become more independent and access work, uh, vocational training, and continued education without relying on donors. Another issue uh, is that uh, there is currently no policies that cover aftercare support for young people living in residential care in Uganda. So as Uganda caregivers, we are advocating for caregivers to be involved in these policy discussions so that there's need uh, to properly understand the necessary, to, there is need to properly understand caregivers and provide the necessary support. I would like to make a point. Uh, when we were having, when we were in these workshops and we were informed of crimes against children through the research or still or in the ongoing uh, engagements with care leavers, we make sure that we discuss this with care leavers and also inform the relevant authorities. Thank you, please. The next slide. Yes, uh, Uganda Care Leavers, uh, we, we are going to use this document as evidence to raise awareness of the issues that are affecting care leavers and also advocate for the change in the way we care for our children. We are going to use this document to mobilize support for young adults who have left care advocate for the inclusion of care leavers in decision making and policy development and also persuade uh, people who play really a big role in uh, in the lives of children so we are going to persuade donors to redirect their funding away from long term residential care facilities to family strengthening and best care alternatives uh, next slide please yeah. Okay, thank you, Mai. And now we'd like to ask participants to take another quick 
poll um, and let us know about your engagement with Care Leavers and Care Leaver organizations. So we ask that you all please take just a minute to answer four questions. Okay, sorry, it seems that question four, you're unable to select all. So perhaps just select the one that best represents how you engage, please. Sorry about that technical glitch. Okay, Sarah, can you post results? Okay, so it looks like 92% of us have engaged with the care lever, 8% have not. Um, most engage regularly, but a significant percentage uh, only have once or a few times. And 13% of us um, engage with a care lever every day. 76% uh, of us have engaged with a care lever organization, and about one quarter of us have not. And it looks like, oh, other is the big win in, in um how you engage, so or where you met them. So conference, training, provide a service, a very, very small number have hired them as a staff or consultant, and almost 20% have conducted research. Good, great. Next slide, please. So Ruth and Mai, uh, could you both share with us how policymakers, government, donors, practitioners, those of us on the phone and the colleagues that we work with, how should we engage with care leavers and perhaps more importantly, how we should not? Ruth? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I think when we, when we talk about these, I know there are so many people wanting to know what exactly they should do. And so for policymakers, government, and practitioners that we ask of you to avail opportunities for participation, uh, we cannot bring about positive change if care leavers are not participating. And so we feel if we are going to do the best things for children and bring positive change, then we have no option but to make sure that we avail opportunities for care leavers' participation. So we're going to involve care leavers in bottom-up planning process. And for a number of times, care leavers have felt that they are only are being provided with already made plans for them and they're not involved in any planning of the processes. So they, we, we feel, and, and that is what everyone feels, that uh, we ask of you to involve uh, care leavers in bottom-up planning processes. But we also involve care leavers in development of tools. You know, uh, the care reform has a number of tools that every of us and every practitioner is taking part and developing. Uh, while we understand that these are experts and people have gone to school for these and they are trained in these, but we also believe that care leavers are experts through their own experience. And so they, uh, they ask of us to involve them in developing of these tools. Uh, that we're also going to engage care leavers in design and implementation of monitoring frameworks. I had mentioned this before. Let's not ask care leavers to come and help you implement and they were never part of the design. But then that we ask you to involve the care leavers right from designing and implementation of monitoring frameworks. Uh, we have all uh, talked about what is wrong, uh, what went wrong, uh, what did not work for you, how would, would it have been better, and what should have been done during your exit. Uh, we've had you know, a number of questions and people asking about, please tell us about your exit, you know, how you felt. You know. It is only prudent that we all ask care leavers what success of care reform would look like and use that information to develop relevant outcome indicators. It's only when um, care leavers will feel that they were involved right from the start to the end and not that their engagement stops after we get the information on how to do things right. 
but then to make sure that we come back to them and ask exactly what the success of care reform would look like. I would like to hand over to Mai uh, to carry on. Thank you, Luz. Um, yeah, I'll continue from where Luz stopped. And I'd say we need policymakers, government and practitioners. Uh, we need them to involve care leavers on district and sub-county committees to share their experience and so that their voices are heard. Policymakers and anyone working with working for the good of a child should provide opportunities for care leavers. I would also say um, train care leavers to be trainers of others in all aspects of life. Can be life skills, mentoring, farming, financial management, and also something people really forget most of the time is uh, the sexual reproductive uh, part of life. So that should also be put in consideration. I would say that we have filed care uh, court. So I think everyone uh, practicing government policymakers should involve care leavers in the design of and implementation of ad, ad, advocacy efforts so that they can be part of the reform movement in Uganda or anywhere in the country where there is care leavers. Next slide, please. Uh -huh. Ruth, go ahead. Um, where there is a should, of course, there has to be a should not. And uh, care leavers want to ask the policymakers, even as you continue to engage and to uh, ask uh, to avail opportunities for care leavers, that we are asking that um, uh, never use or we should not use a care leaver story, image or video footage without consent. We, 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 uh, we share a lot about our stories and, and most of the times we have images taken and, and sometimes filming done. And having come from you know, a background where this was the norm by visitors in the orphanage, and even knowing that our stories could be very uh, traumatic and very painful, Kalivas are respectfully asking that no one should ever use a Kaliva story, image or video footage without their consent. And consent here does not mean just signing a release form without understanding what exactly is the content of the consent or of the release form. Um, we also are asking that Kalivas should not be paraded and constantly ask Kalivas to share their stories. I like the title and if all of us are noticed that the title is more than our stories. But when we make it the norm to parade and constantly ask care leavers to share their stories, it becomes more like there is nothing else care leavers can give apart from their stories. And this is what we want to challenge. We want to change. We want to change the way we're doing things for care leavers. There is much more that a care leaver can bring to the table be beyond what they went through, beyond their background, beyond you know, a, a painful exit, beyond the voluntarism aspect. Uh, we have we have we have care leavers, you know, who are qualified. We have journalists, we have doctors, and so oftentimes when we hear about a care leavers engagement, the first things that have uh, in the past people have thought about is what what is the story she's coming to share? Please, 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 care leavers are asking that there is more of their engagement than their stories, and it cannot be stressed more because it is already there on the title. Uh, we uh, acknowledge that yes, we all. Um, acknowledge that every child belongs to a family and the best place for a child to grow and thrive is a family. And, and most of us were robbed of the right to family. Um, however, uh, we, we asking, we know that this is risky um, to just, uh, you know, come strongly and talk about the harms and, and what didn't go right. Uh, but we're asking that care leavers should never be exposed to any potential conflicts and negative engagements with residential care or others. It takes courage to speak about a system that did not work for you. And we acknowledge the risks involved. But that doesn't mean that because there are things that went wrong, there are things that also, uh, you know, everything went wrong. We acknowledge that some of us got education because of these institutions. We acknowledge that some of us, yeah, there are things that really worked for us. 
Uh, so we ask that our engagement in care reform should not expose any care liver to potential conflicts with these uh, residential institutions. And then we also ask that care liver story or experience should never be used for your own gain, could be your own gain or your organization's gain. Um, yeah, people, people are different and personalities are different. And while we know our stories are powerful and stories shape the way we think, uh, stories bring about change. Stories are the reason why we are here today on this webinar to discuss more on how we can bring about change for the children in our country and globally. Well, we know this, uh, it is very, there is potential to use Kaliva story for your own gain and for your organization's gain, that we are going to respect Kaliva's stories and that ultimately they will feel empowered, that even for those who ever share their story, they'll feel dignified and they share this for a better cause. Excellent, thank you, Ru, thank you, Mai. And now we'd like to take a break and have some question and answer time. And I will read, oops, I will read the questions and let's see, I will read the questions and question one, um, have your care lever organizations advocated for specific policy changes in your context? And if so, what are they? So I think we'll go question by question. And this one looks like it's to both Ruth and Mai. So Mai, would you like to take a first stab at that if your care lever organization has advocated for specific policy change in Uganda? Yes, thank you, Kelly. Our care leavers are advocate mainly for alternative care. Uh, and recently we were involved in a alternative care framework review with the Ministry of Gender, Labor and Social Development. So uh, alternative care, uh, if I talk about alternative care, is Did we lose any, you, Mai? Uh, I think we might have uh, lost Mai. So I'm while here, she's- I'm, I'm back. Do you hear me? Hello? Yes, uh, I think we can when hear I you, talk about, okay, thank you. When I talk about alternative care, I mean any other kind of care for children outside of their biological fam um, families. This can be formal or informal care. Thank you. Another question, please. So, um, what we're we waiting for, Kelly, uh, uh, allow me to add on that. That Uganda Care Leavers, uh, someone asked me earlier, uh, how long we've been in existence. As I said, we started in 2016 and we didn't want to just start with uh, Hope Care Leavers. We, first, we wanted to go on the ground and see things Care Leavers are going through. Uh, is there any need of help and what is it that they need for help? That's why and how we came up with that the experience of a care leaver. Okay, so while we um, wait for Kelly and Ruth to hopefully rejoin us, Mai, I'll just um, send the next question to you, okay. which is, um, someone wrote, I sometimes sense that non-care leavers tend to focus on the impact of institutions through a child yeah. development lens. So, um, for example, attachment, whereas care leavers often have a broader view, uh, such as looking at detachment from the larger community and the culture, along with the impact on child development. Um, do you ever feel that your messages are not fully harmonized? So, do you feel that care leavers and non-care leavers 
have different messages about the impacts of institutions? Uh, thank you, Sarah. Uh, with uh, non-care livers, mostly uh, people unaware of the dangers of being long in a residential care, yes, they, 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 they actually feel that. But care livers, they do know this. Um, yes, so... <laughs> Hello. Hello, we're back. Sorry, we the Kenyan Wi-Fi just went out, but we're back. Welcome, Kelly. We uh, Mai was just answering question number three, so um, we can also maybe perhaps get Ruth's input on that on that question. Perfect. Thank you. Let's see. Can you repeat? The question, Sarah, please. Sure, sure, yeah. Um, someone wrote, I sometimes sense that non-care leavers tend to focus on the impact of institutions through a child development lens, whereas mm -hmm. care leavers have a broader view looking at detachment from the community and the culture. And um, this person asked, do you ever feel that our messages are not fully harmonized? Mm -hmm. Great. Sorry, could you read the question again? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I sometimes sense that non-care leavers tend to focus on the impact of institutions through a child's development lens, for example, looking at attachment. Care leavers, on the other hand, often have a broader view, for example, detachment from community and culture along with the impact on child development and the risks of violence, etc. Do you ever feel that our messages are not fully harmonized? So our care leavers messages and non-care leavers messages aligned or do you feel there's any um, difference between them? I, I agree and I still, I, I must say uh, that we have a long way to go uh, to make sure that we harmonize these two. But to our else non-care leavers, what they say it's, it's correct and what we say it's correct. But I, I want to believe that there's no right or wrong. But we do understand that yes, we, we, we as the care leavers look at it from a broader perspective uh, every person will tell you what stood out for them, but ultimately we, we recognize uh, the, having to miss the chance to be integrated, to integrate fully into the community. And that is what really uh, matters to us most. Having been separated from a community and coming back to the same. And so I still believe we have a long way to go uh, to make sure that the messages uh, go out there and we yeah, it's advocacy is quite a long journey to go in, and we hope that um, every person will come to the same page on what exactly um, is, is the issue. Great. Sarah, could you read the next question, please? Sure. Um, the next question is, how was your experience um, to mobilize care leavers for the workshop or research? Mai, would you like to take the first response? Yeah, yeah. Yes, Kerry. Uh, I said this at the beginning. I say it was hard for, uh, to get care leavers because most of the institution, actually, if I'm honest, none of the institution engaged with us, uh, helping with information, none. So we, we, um, we use the government officials, like professional uh, officers, and on the on the district level, and they actually uh, managed to uh, to help us identify the existing um, small groups of of care leavers, and then we build our network from there. But it was really really hard to get care leavers. Thank you, Mai. Ruth, anything to add to that about developing the guidance? I think for us it was not uh, as hard because, of course, because of the presence of a network that sometimes we have, we are in constant communication with the care leavers. It was not really hard to bring them together. But what was uh, really not easy, of course, is having to, you know, them sharing their past experiences and you know from where they are coming from and like i say these are people who are used to seeing people ask them questions every now and then 
But because of course uh, they felt that this is a, a subject that we all need to uh, shed light on. So it was easy for uh, them to, you know, they were willing to just uh, be part of the journey and inform on, 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 you know, like what are the next steps and just to let people know exactly how this should happen. And of course, I think the motivation here was it does not just benefit the Kenyan care livers, but it is for care livers globally. And so we felt this was that comes in being a member of a network. Great, thank you. So we're going to move ahead. Uh, if there's time at the end, we can respond because I think we have some additional questions that we um, haven't answered yet. But we'll move ahead and we'd like for Mai and Ruth to explain a little bit more about the history of their care lever organizations, which will hopefully provide some inspiration to other care leavers uh, in different contexts. So Mai, if you don't mind, uh, starting with the story of the Uganda care leavers. Thank you, Kelly, once again. Uh, Uganda care leavers, as I said, it's a uh, um, area, it's a, a social welfare project designed to support children, youth, and young adults who have spent all of, of their childhood in residential care. So Uganda Care Leavers was formed in 2016, and it has more than 300 care leavers. Uh, just to add on, um, Uganda Care Leavers is supported by alternative care initiatives in Uganda, and then Bula in the uh, United States of America. Um, we support care leavers to build community, including online, um, social media, make connections between themselves, but also with uh, potential uh, organizations that are working with children or helping care leavers. Uh, undertake research, like we just uh, have had our research experience. And um, we also advocate uh, work with care leavers to advocate for the rights of a child. Thank you, uh, Kelly. Okay, next slide, please. Yes, uh, Uganda care leavers, uh, we do provide a lot of things. Uh, we have a network that brings out uh, all care leavers together and they share uh, their experience in a very uh, comfortable way and what they need uh, only with what they want to share. Uh, we provide counseling. Uh, counseling is really important with, uh, with the care leavers because we all know uh, about one or two or three or many stories. I can share a little story with you guys, uh, just a short story about a 13 year old who was raped by a caregiver in an institution. She got pregnant and then got chased away from the institution because the institution was Catholic and they couldn't take uh, a pregnant girl who's not married to be in there. She went back on the streets and then lost a, a child during birth. So you can see all the trauma she went through and this is not, uh, this was not her, you know, have fault to go through all this. So if you meet uh, someone like that, and this is not only uh, a story from one person, we've come across many stories like this. And uh, very important if someone is going to engage with care leavers or engaging with care leavers to have uh, counselors. We also um, provide care leavers with referral opportunities. I can say, uh, I, as I said, like vocational trainings, uh, jobs, uh, yes. I, I already mentioned the platform for care leavers to share ex their experience and their views. And this actually helped them to have, to have a belonging, like a sense of a community because they have a common identity. Thank you so much, Kelly. Next slide, please. 
Great, thank you, Mai. And now, Ruth, if you can tell us a little bit about the history of Keska and what Keska is currently doing. Um, thank you so much, and sorry for uh, the technicalities. Uh, so Keska is a registered society and for young people who spent all or part of their childhood in residential mm -hmm. care. And just so to mention that this year we are celebrating 10 years of great work. Registered in 2009, uh, and, and yeah, it started by a group of friends in a very casual way, a meeting in a house and talking about, you know, uh, their, their similar situations. And, and they later reached out to other young people with similar issues of transitioning. Uh, and this was because, yeah, they felt that there was a higher responsibility um, beyond, you know, meeting in a house, but there was a higher calling, which of course we can attest to each 10 years down the line. Uh, we're so happy that we are currently at a membership of over 650 members um, as members of Kenya Society of Calivers. What do we do? If you check on our website, you'll see three things. We connect, we inform, and we transform. So I know you're asking, how do you do that? Yes, we have activities, including advocacy and awareness. Yeah, talk of advocacy and someone will mention Keska and, and how we are passionate about this agenda and this subject. We also do women empowerment program through a program called Singing to the Lions. Yes, I am a product of Singing to the Lions, which is a 10 week program um, and it's a healing, a trauma healing session. We take, we have been taking uh, our girls and our ladies through this program, but right now we also have the men uh, and we're so happy for our donors who have given a chance for the men to also do a Singing to the Lions. So why is singing to the lions? Singing means smiling. It symbolizes smiling. And the lions here symbolizes our fears. In Kenya, we use the lion because, yeah, that is the most feared animal in Kenya. In, 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 in India, is singing to the cobra. Um, I see people here from Guatemala. Now you can use your own term of, of the animal that you fear most. could be singing to. <laughs> uh, and this is how we do it. Uh, as a beneficiary of singing to the lions, two things stood out for me, and I just want to mention that quickly so that any care liver here uh, will uh, get a chance to go through singing to the lions, and donors here will give young, uh, care livers a chance to also go through the same. Um, one was the principle of a tree in a forest. Uh, when we exit in the community, you, we suffer from withdrawal. Many care livers are never able to, you know, like connect with the rest of the people. They have no peers. They don't know where to go to or bounce back. And so you end up feeling very lonely and very alone and no, you know, nowhere to turn back. And most of us will tell you that, yeah, when you went back to the homes we grew up in. Some would not be accepted because either their bed is taken up and others there's an argument that you're, you're now an adult. So the principle of a tree in a forest, it just tells you that when the wind blows, it blows to every tree in a forest. When the rain rains, it rains on every tree in that forest. And so as a care liver, you're not alone. And I'm so happy to see that we have care livers here from India, from Zimbabwe. And so it is just so true to me that the principle of a tree in a forest is very true. And the other one is that there are situations in life that will require you to blow like wind, to flow like water and to burn like fire. We are all faced with these situations where we don't know how to respond to them. But these two principles for me still stands true. I was able to overcome trauma and I hope that every other person and young person going through this program will overcome trauma. Please check out our website and you're going to see amazing um, work that is done and achieved by singing to the lions. Then we do puppetry projects. The puppetry is a very interesting project that uh, we use puppeteers to uh, teach and educate children on their rights and the community as well. Uh, we, we've, we've spoken a lot about the right to family for every child. We've spoken about uh, does the communities really understand that every child has a right to family? And when we look at the push factors and why most of these children ended up in an orphanage, you see there was an ignorant aspect where we think the right for food is way better than the right to family. But then how are we using this to educate and advocate um, and, and educate the community on the rights of children? So puppetry is a way of engaging the children to just find out if they know their rights. And if they don't know, we are able to teach them on what exactly their rights are. Then computer training and service center. Kenya Society of Calivers has a center where we, we are in a digital era and we don't want to leave our care behind. Uh, 
and we want to empower them with skills, computer training skills where they go through this training and have a certificate. It is an important skill to acquire for employability. Then mentorship for life program. Everyone needs mentorship and so are care leavers. And so for us, mentorship is key that every person needs a mentor even as they carry on with their life. Then a thousand memories project. Wow, yeah. This, this project started because of a situation that is, yeah, it, it shouldn't happen. Uh, and, and, and Kenya Society of Calibers came in to fill in the gap where uh, this, this, young, uh, this child passes on. And I don't know how about the culture in other countries, but we have this photo that is placed on a casket during the funeral. But then there was no single photo of this child that anyone would find to use that photo during the funeral. And any photos of the child taken were either taken by volunteer tourists, you know, and they, so like literally there was no album, there was there was nowhere that you could get get a photo to use during the funeral. It was a sad moment to imagine that you 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 have served, you you've been in a life where every other person can show their photos when they're growing up, but this child could not. And so Kenya Society of Kaliva steps in with a thousand memories project to make sure that we go to every uh, to to most of the uh, children charitable institutions, take photos and create an album. Why? Because when we grow up. Um, even myself, I, I want to see photos of me as a young child, as a young girl, as a young boy, as a, you know, and every person can acknowledge the power of photos. That we can create memories for children because that is something that maybe the home may not be able to do. But then how could we bring about change as, advo uh, as advocates for the rights of children? And this is one way to advocate for uh, memories. And so through these activities, going back to my point, when we connect, we inform and we transform. It's out of this that we are able to transform our care livers. Singing to the lions transforms lives. I am a transformed life. And I, I, I say this every other time. Uh, thank you so much. Next slide. Thank you. And Ruth and Mai, now we'd like to ask you both to share some lessons learned from the experience of um, establishing care lever, lever organizations, working together with care leavers, what's some advice from your own experiences and that of your organizations that you'd like to share with others? Go ahead, Ruth. Uh, yeah, so although we share similar experiences, that doesn't uh, make us all the same, and it doesn't mean that everyone will always agree. Uh, we expect people will disagree and I just saw a question where someone had asked that how the fact that we are talking about uh, care reform and it can be a very controversial subject is there a point where some of the members disagree yes there's some uh, some of members will disagree but that doesn't mean that now the family of care leave us break so we share similar experiences but not everyone uh, uh, will agree and it is okay to disagree that is totally okay. We have learned to accommodate everyone. Um, and yes, that the leaders of care liver organizations require expertise in different areas. There's one thing to be willing to serve uh, in, in a network like Kenya Society of Care Leavers, yes. But sometimes as a leader, and, and I can talk about myself because I'm a leader, um, sometimes I feel like I am incapacitated uh, because of probably I don't have a skills to do one or two things. And so uh, how then uh, is that a learning point? Is that any, any person here and those who want to form a network, yeah, you can form the network and have the leaders, but then it's good to have an opportunity to uh, build the capacity of the leaders. Uh, I, we have learned something that we need to acknowledge the different categories or groups of care leavers and the dynamics of each. And this is, I can give an example. There are young people, care leavers living with disabilities. The others are HIV positive. And that when we understand these, we'll be able to understand the issues and challenges around them. It is very important for us to know this. Sometimes we have conferences and we have people living with disabilities. And when we acknowledge this, we're able even to plan for, you know, a smooth transport from point A to point B. Uh, when we understand that we have people with us who are HIV positive, then the way we do our messaging is very sensitive. Um, just so that we appreciate everyone and for who they are and what they stand for. Um, so, Mai, I would ask you to uh, proceed with the next. Thank you, Ruth. Um, 
lessons uh, we have learned from engaging with K Uganda Care Liver, uh, one is that we have to be clear about our expectations. Often care livers see us as donors, and yet we, uh, have, we are not donors and we don't hand out money. Um, another one is to need to set clear boundaries. Often uh, boundaries are overstepped by care livers, asking inappropriate questions uh, in, you know, in uh, uh, wrong times. So I can give examples if you, uh, care livers ask for something that you who is engaging with them, you don't even have it. I can, they say, oh, if you start a tourist company for me, then my life will be better. So uh, we really need to show them when, where, and how uh, we can engage with them and how far we can go. So boundaries have to be clear. So you, you, uh, we all know that, or anyone who have worked with a child knows this. Uh, care livers uh, can easily or care livers can easily become independent on someone. You can come with your good intentions, but from the beginning, you have to let them know what your priorities are, you can do. So uh, you have to work more closely, helping them developing their skills, uh, but not um, promising what you uh, can't give them because they've been through this, they don't want, they should not go uh, through it again now as an adult. Great. Thank you. So, um, yeah, yes, I, um, I want to add on something. One last thing. Uh, working with residential care facilities is a non-starter. They are not interested in supporting uh, care leavers. So we learned that they uh, also make care leavers shut up. And most of care leavers are uh, scared of revealing their their experience. So you have to come up with a way how you can, uh, or you, or you have to create an environment, how you can work with care leavers, how you can get them uh, trust you. And, and then, yeah, yes, that's it. Thank you, care leavers. Great, thanks, Mai. And now, next slide, please. I'd like to ask Mai and Ruth. Um, it's your turn to put your ask of participants, those of us who are keen to um, engage you. Please, please give us some ideas of, of how we should do that. Ruth? So on behalf of Calivas in Kenya and globally, because we're representing uh, Calivas even out there, that we are asking the policymakers and practitioners, the government, um, to find ways to engage with care livers in meaningful ways and on a regular basis. That engagement will not stop at a conference or a workshop. Um, that we're going to support care liver organizations. I just like when we started the poll, uh, this, uh, I saw that those within networks is at 11% and not networks is 89%. That is a reason enough for us to commit to support care liver organizations and include them in relevant programming and advocacy. Care livers network are very important. And I can't, I can I, I, I envy or I look forward to a day when every country will have a network of care livers. Uh, that then we're going to provide practical experience for and mentor care livers. Uh, they need practical experience, and this can happen in different uh, ways within your organizations, within you know your, your companies that you work uh, in. And then we are going to mentor these care livers. That we're also going to support education opportunities for care livers. Most of these care livers exited, and their sponsorship ended at then. Uh, a majority are brilliant minds who want to pursue their careers. They've not had the chance because, of course, when, when, when you know, support ended, there was no way they would carry on with the education. 
So what we are asking is that you could support education opportunities and even link them to scholarships and support them through the application processes so that they can, you know, pursue their careers. That um, we, we, you know, most of us here are working in organizations. And what we are asking is, is that uh, we can have opportunities where care leavers are hired for the positions. I know this sometimes people are like, oh, care leavers do not have the expertise, care leavers. Uh, yeah, we are not saying this, that you employ care leavers who are not qualified. But what you are trying to say is that we do know there are care leavers even in our network and there are other networks with bachelors in, in different you know, courses and skills. We have graduates as care leavers. So if we have opportunities, what we request is that these opportunities uh, and, and, and priorities are given to care leavers. When we talk about empowerment and support for care leavers, these are the things that really matters uh, to them sometimes, that we give them an opportunity to join your organization. If you, they can be a HR, human resource manager, because they have the skills. Uh, and that uh, we know every time that we want to put across a point, uh, it, the, the care leavers and, and their messages can be quite intimidating. So care leavers wanted to ask that please do not be afraid or intimidated by care leaver messages. And all we ask is that could you please lean in and listen. And through the listening, we'll know the best way to handle and bring positive change. Uh, sometimes it could be harsh. Sometimes they have very harsh messages, but trust you me, it is the very honest feelings and the genuine concerns they have out of their own experiences. So please don't feel intimidated, but listen. Then we're asking that we treat and think of care leavers as equal partners. More often than not, we, you know, we have looked down upon care leavers. Sometimes we have thought it's just a resource that you can tap into and leave. But these Calibers are equals. What you want to do for yourself and, and what you want to be done by your organization for you because you're hired in the organization. That you do the same for calibers. If they are hired or they are asked to give their expertise in an area, that they are equally compensated as any other person because you hire them because they're an expert through their own experience. That we recognize their time is just as important as any other person's time. And that is, it goes back to looking at them as equals and not just like any other people who come input and leave. That every time they're asked to do something, their time is, is you know, like there's value for their time and that you recognize yeah, they had to leave or any other thing they would do to come and give their input. Great, thank you, Ruth. Mai, could you speak to donors, please? Yes, uh, thank you for the chance to, for, for giving me to speak to donors. Our dear donors, uh, we are really happy for what you're donating to us in all ways. But we want to ask you a few things. We want you to redirect your efforts. Uh, resources, supporting families, communities, and also preventing separation, you know, preventing um, th those uh, organization working with prevention and separation. So we are asking you to start supporting family-based care, transition after care for uh, us care leavers. We are supporting you, also, we are asking you, sorry, to support us for further education. It can be vocational training. If someone gets vocational skills, that's a, uh, a way, uh, one way to uh, independent living. Uh, supporting uh, training community centers. We have some uh, community centers that just need a, a push from a donor to improve and give better services to uh, care leavers. We also want to ask our donors to stop supporting uh, practices of mission trips and volunteering to care facilities. Yes, uh, people who are mission missionaries and volunteers, they are good, but when in a, with care facilities, long stay they make uh children stay longer because of their existence so it would be really great if our dear donors change that 
so uh, lastly, uh, we care livers, we are uh, advocating to donors to help us uh, support care livers uh, organizations. Care livers are starting up uh, their own organization, things that can bring to them together, uh, uh, things can do uh, to improve on their lives. Ruth said uh, many of those, I mentioned those uh, through the, uh, uh, what we've been going through. So please, we are asking you to donate and support uh, care leavers uh, activities. And we are also asking you one more thing, uh, which is also very important, is you ask for our opinions. Most of the time, um, donors come in and they want you to do what they want. So please listen to our voices, uh, our ideas, and support us, but with you listening and asking for our opinions. Thank you so much, Kelly. Thank you, Mai. And now uh, we'd like to have one more rapid online poll. Next slide, Sarah. Before we, I think it'll leave us with some time for all of the many questions. We've been collecting them. But if you could do a rapid poll quickly, the most important or interesting thing you learned today and what you'd like to learn more about. This will help Better Care Network and the care leavers that have so graciously presented um, better understand what went well, what was interesting, and what are some opportunities to share additional information in the future. So if you could please take a minute and answer, and then we will get to all of your questions. Okay, do we have the results, Sarah? Okay, so the most important or interesting thing you learned today, we have the winner was all of the above, which is always a positive to end a webinar on. Uh, a third of you said how care leavers can organize and advocate for themselves. Also interest in how to engage care leavers in your day-to-day -day work. Um, more about the care leaver experience and only 4% didn't learn anything today. And what you'd like to learn more about the resounding winner in, in this is how to connect care leaver organizations in different contexts and countries, as well as how to design and provide services to support care leavers. Um, another 37% answered both how to support care leavers to organize and establish a care leaver organization and how to engage care leavers in my work. So thank you very much for taking that. We will take note of this. And now it looks like we have about 10 minutes for some additional questions. I'll try to get through. Uh, there's a quick question for Ruth. How many people have used or have been trained with the guidance? Do you have a rough estimate? Uh, for the guidelines, we, we, just, we just launched the document uh, last month, but we had representatives from uh, five organizations uh, who, yeah, we shared the document with, and we hope that they are going to, you know, of course, learn something from it. And then we, we also now uh, had to distribute it to, we had three representatives from charitable children institutions. So, uh, and, and the government, of course. So we have 11 entities that we distributed the guideline with, but we are looking forward to have a dissemination strategy uh, very soon. And I would also add that uh, I believe we shared in the chat box the link for that. It is available online and we would encourage any and all people to, to use that guidance. It's not just Kenya specific, it's very much uh, designed for all contexts. So the next question, Mai, is for you. 
you mentioned that donors should support care leavers after they have left care. Do you have a specific time frame for that support? And is it financial? Could you answer that, Mai? Yes, Kelly, thank you. Uh, we don't have a specific uh, time frame uh, because we are, uh, we are going to, uh, to come up with planning how long you can uh, how long you can care livers or how long that do care livers need help but that is uh, I think we need to plan we need donors to help us planning for living care start from planning living care and then until you see someone is independent money uh, when care livers as I said they need counseling they need life skills uh, they need, uh, most of people enjoy care livers stories. So we need to also how to teach them, how do you uh, tell your story? How can you share your story? How do you behave in society? Because care livers have been isolated from the society uh, for long. So we need to uh, teach them and also, uh, yeah, opportunities refer them to possible opportunities. Thank you, Kelly. Great, thank you, Mai. And there's a question here for Ruth. Ruth, could you please explain how KESCA interacts with the government of Kenya, different departments, for example, social welfare, at district and national level, uh, police or justice? How have you engaged with government of Kenya? I must say it hasn't been an easy thing and it has been a long way coming. Uh, we are still not there yet, but I acknowledge the support of organizations and consortium like Changing the Way We Care, who uh, most of the times our engagement has been under their umbrella because uh, we don't want to be uh, to feel like we are bashing the government in a Kenya where uh, uh, this, this, the government issue really is very sensitive. So we are still uh, working our way up, but I must acknowledge that so far the Department of Children Services uh, uh, knows that we exist and that every they acknowledge that every child belongs to fam to a family. And currently, we have uh, changing the way we care in in you know partnership with the government, uh, doing pilot studies in different counties, and all of this you could say yeah we were uh, we have been participating and even if we've not been really in the front line because of course with the government we have really to massage their ego for them to buy into anything. And also for us to be in, uh, for Kenya Society of Care Leavers to be part of the group that is forming the care, that is developing the care reform strategy in the country. I think that is a good thing and it's a, it's a step forward. Uh, and we, we just can't wait to see how that goes. So the fact that the government recognizes that there is importance of care reform strategy in our country, and having care leavers as part of the team and the committee that is developing that, I think we have come a long way and we appreciate. Excellent, thanks Ruth. And here's a very interesting question for both. I am a care leaver from Cambodia and want to establish a care leaver network here. What is your advice about the best first steps to bring together care leavers to form a network or an organization? Ruth, do you want to start? And then we'll hand it to Mai. I think for me, my advice would be from, you know, our own learning and how they started. Like you could probably uh, identify some of the uh, people you grew up with in, in your institution. Then you're able to reach out to other uh, uh, institutions. And this is uh, basically you could visit the orphanage and ask for uh, people who have uh, exited from the same institution. Uh, normally, when, when, when you want to... Well, in our country right now, if you mention about care livers, it's, yeah, everyone will withdraw fast and they'll think twice because they think care reform is very controversial. But I would believe that if you reach out to the orphanages or CCIs in your country and ask for people who have exited, you can get contacts. Please have a cup of coffee in town or something and chat about it. That would be a beginning of a movement. And 10 years down the line, we'll be here to celebrate you uh, from Cambodia. <laughs> Thank you. And Mai, do you have any additional advice for our colleague from Cambodia? I agree with everything Luz said. 
yeah, find existing caregivers. Um, they, there may be informal networks that are already existing, so you may be able to reach those ones. from the same institute you went in. Yes, Great. I guess as Luth said. Excellent, thanks Mai. And here's another question um, both of you could probably respond to. Someone is asking, what should the adult or co-worker role be within a care lever organization? So how should adults engage with? Any thoughts uh, on that? I think adults should be mentors of care leavers. The, uh, care leavers, they can be the living examples to care leavers. Uh, they're just, uh, yeah, mentors. Adults can be our mentors. Excellent, yeah. thanks Mai. And Ruth, anything to add? Yeah, I think uh, I, would, I would also support the same uh, because yeah, care leavers won't guide us on, on, on a lot of things. It could be career, it could be the next big decision that they have to make, but then having adults to, and of course they have to be trusted because uh, we do know that care leavers still struggle to trust people uh, for obvious reasons. Um, and so, yeah, I think it's more of mentorship. Great. I'm looking for another question. I saw one from... Stephen, okay, Stephen is keen to hear a bit about relationships of care leavers with their relatives, especially considering that most are returned or reunited with these relatives after long periods of separation from them. So perhaps Maya and Ruth a little bit about how to better prepare um, young people who are exiting care for that and support them perhaps during the process. Ruth, would you like to start? Uh, oh, go ahead, Mai, please. Uh, okay, thank you, Kelly. Uh, well, it's uh, very often that care leavers' relationship with their family members are strained. And as Uganda care leavers, we recognize that. And we need more support to build the relationship with the care, care, with, between care leavers and the, the relatives. And also, not only the, the families, but also the community as well. Thank you. Thanks. Ruth, anything to add? Yeah, I think uh, based on, on the previous experiences, Eliva have uh, mentioned that little or no effort was made to, uh, you know, bridge the gap between them and their relatives. And so for them, it will be more during the preparation that parents or relatives are prepared before uh, the child is reunited. And even after this, that there will be intentional efforts to make sure that there is a sitting between the caregivers and their relatives to just bridge the gap and make sure that you're not only integrating in the community, but even with your own relatives. Great. And one last question, I believe, although we will take note of all of these and hopefully uh, we can perhaps respond um, privately via email. But the next question I think is quite important. Ruth and Mai, have you and your organizations had any chance to connect to care leavers or care leaver organizations in other countries? Ruth? I think yes, and uh, it's through our advocacy work that we have come across. Um, we, we get linked up by people with care leavers. Sometimes we bump on these care leavers in conferences as they come to equally do the same advocacy work as us. But I must say it's not easy uh, because sometimes you're connected to a care leaver who is not a member of a network. And so uh, I would go back to the same point that really not so many countries have networks of care leavers, but I'm glad to to learn that India was inspired by what Kenya Society of Care Leavers is doing and already Aditya is forming a network of care leavers there. So yes, it, um, getting networks of other care leavers has not been easy, but individual care leavers, yes, we, we have been connected to a number of them. Great. Mai, would you like to share something? Yes, uh, Kelly, Kenyan Society of Care Leavers, they'll be really uh, supportive. Um, and you know, as I'm a Ugandan and Kenya, uh, Kenyans are foreigners. So yes, they've been really sad. And thank you so much, uh, 
Kenyan Society of Care Livers for your hand. Great. Yes. And it looks like I'm just reading through the questions and the comments and it looks like there are definitely there is interest from others to to connect with Ruth and my and their care lever organizations. I think there is growing interest in this. However, looking at time, um, I do want to ask Ruth and Mai if they have any closing words before we officially end this webinar. Mai, would you like to end with a quick thought? Uh, yes, uh, I'm, I'm here. Um, I would like to uh, thank everyone listening in. Um, I'm hoping, that I, we, I know there's still uh, much to discuss uh, and uh, hopefully what we've discussed has, has uh, given you an overview of what we do and what we do. Uh, thank you so much again for listening. Thank you, Maya. And Ruth, final words. Uh, I want to appreciate all of us here today for making it to this webinar, but I, I just want to insist on one thing, that Calivas are more than stories, that what we have learned today, we will change the way we engage with Calivas, and we're going to give power back to the Calivas because for a long time it's been taken away from them. They have felt they have no control of their own lives. And yes, uh, we're looking at a world where one day every child will be reunited with their families and that we cut down the generation of having to separate children with their communities. And yes, I want to see that every country will be challenged to have a network of care leavers and because of the donors listening to this, uh, they will be able to avail the support for the care leaver networks. And we're looking forward to have an international conference of care leavers. Uh, we hope that all of you are going to be very supportive. Uh, thank you so much. Excellent. Thank you, Ruth and my um, excellent presenters. Every time I've had the opportunity to engage with both of these women, I come away inspired and pushed to do better. Uh, I think they remind us all how we can and should be more intentional about finding ways to engage young people, care leavers, like Ruth and Mai and their care leaver organization. So thank you to PESCA, to the Uganda Care Leavers, to the Better Care Network, and to Changing the Way We Care for this opportunity. Please also note that this has been recorded and will be made available. So if you want to listen to it again or share with your friends, colleagues, other care leavers, uh, government donors, please do so. And we will try our best to address the remaining questions. We, we really appreciate it and wish we had more time. And finally, please do not forget to download both the documents. They're excellent resources um, with really useful information. And Thank you again to all of our listeners. We really do appreciate you taking the time today and um, appreciate the excellent questions. Thank you.